So we've seen in our other videos how adding a battery to a solar installation can increase your self-consumption of energy, stops us selling it back to the grid at a low price, and then buying it back again later at a higher price. But it can also open up doors to all these smart energy tariffs, so we may benefit with cheaper bills. But with batteries coming with all the different ratings and terminology, well, what do they all mean? Well, in this video, we are going to break down the terminology and help you understand what they mean when you're specking a solar storage battery solution. And we're going to be using the SunSync 5.32 kilowatt hour to help us understand and look at some of the features which can help us navigate this ratings minefield. Let's start with kilowatt hour. This is probably the most important number on any battery storage system, as it's the measure of how much energy can be stored by the battery. So the SunSync battery here is 5.32 kilowatt hours, meaning it can hold 5,320 watts. That's the same as supplying something at 5,000 watts for one hour, or 1,000 watts for five hours. To put that in real world appliance term, that's the same as running two tumble dryers at full pelt for over an hour, which may not seem like much now, but if we take a standard variable tariff at 30 pence per kilowatt hour, and let's say we tumble dry four times a week over the course of a year, that could save you 124 pounds. But remember, this is the amount of energy the battery can store, which is important, but we also need to know how fast we can get at it when we need to draw power from it. And this brings us to another parameter, the C rate. C rating is simply put the rate at which a battery releases its energy. A little bit like a garden tap. You could have it quarter open, half open or fully open. Only this time it's juicy electrics being released and not water, which is good because it wouldn't work. And water and electrics? Mm. If we had a battery rated at 1C, it would be able to discharge its energy in an hour. The sun sink is rated at 0.5 C, and that means it can discharge two and a half kilowatts per hour. But if we need more, then we can add further batteries. So a second connected battery in parallel would discharge five kilowatts over an hour if they are both 0.5 C. This also means we're not discharging all the energy in our battery in one lump, which can increase the lifespan of the battery. More on that later. Worth remembering as well that the inverter, whose job it is to convert DC into usable AC, needs to also be rated to support the energy level of the battery. So careful consideration is needed for the battery and inverter combination. More information on this can be found at 5.2.3.2 in the Code of Practice for Electrical Energy Storage Systems, which explains how C ratings are worked out. Another term you'll hear when discussing batteries is the SOC, or state of charge. It, simply put, is how much charge we have in our battery. Something we take for granted nowadays as we check the state of charge on our phones every day. Normally shown as a percentage, we can see how much charge we have left in our battery by checking on the BMS screen here or using the SunSync app. Most batteries have a preferred SOC limit with 80% fully charged down to 10% discharge, but it's always to check with the manufacturer. The opposite to SOC is the depth of discharge, which is how much energy the battery has released. Battery manufacturers will tend to use depth of discharge in their specifications, as it can be used to determine the lifespan of the battery. This SunSync will operate for 6,000 cycles at a depth discharge of 80% at 25 degrees Celsius. And yes, temperature does have an impact. Check out our other videos on that. This means we can estimate that if you have one cycle per day, your battery will roughly last 16 years. Not bad. Section five of the Code of Practice for Electrical Energy Storage Systems gives a great overview on how we can spec and install and demystify some of the terminology. But if you want to learn more on how temperature, numbers of cycles, and the battery type can affect the lifespan of a battery, then be sure to click this video right here.